Good morning guys, how you all doing? Sorry I didn't post anything yesterday. Uh, I was coming down with uh, cold symptoms and I'm on about day, was it day 33 now of my uh, my diet challenge. And um, however, oh and the other thing is for the last 30 something hours as well I haven't uh, been eating or drinking and the reason is because I'm nursing a, uh, a slight foot injury uh, that just a little twinge twinge on my foot that I get from running around in boots so I refereed again um, last weekend and I've got this uh, so inflammation in, in the uh, joint where my big toe joins my foot so uh, something that's worked really well for me and I'll show you the picture from last May of when I um, had this kind of arthritis in my foot gouty arthritis that had been going on for weeks and I, I just blew that away with a 48 hour dry fast so that's no eating no drinking um, so yeah I've been dry fasting since um, what is it now so it's now Friday so yeah Wednesday night so I've not had anything to eat or drink really for um, an, two nights and a day and I'll, I'll, it's it's going down it's going down I uh, just had to complete today but even with that if you look at this from um, the last few days so I've got yeah one loss in about 11 games here so um, the brain seems to be working and I've gone straight back up to 1507 in rapid so what I thought I'd do just in this video I want to go through one game that I played last night uh, on my phone and um, we'll analyze together and then I've got a couple in the Dutch as well that I'm going to I'll do that in a separate video. So uh, we'll go through this. I'll put the, the eval and the lines we will show and we'll go through the game and analyze. So my opponent here is Zephyr191 from the UK, rated 1551. And um, let's just go through it. Okay, so we've got a Sicilian and I'm playing the Smith Mora Gambit. We have it. Slightly delayed because he now pushes e6. So what, what I will do here is I'll develop my king's knight anyway and give him a second bite at the cherry to say, do you want to go into a smith Mora line? So now I've got two attackers, three attackers actually on this pawn. So what's he going to do? So he takes the pawn. I recapture with the queen's knight. And now we are into a very regular smith Mora line as though we had smith Mora accepted and then e6, which is perfectly regular. Okay, so now we have a6. So a very common setup in the Smith Mora for black is to push e6, d6, and a6. So here he's stopping the knight and the bishop from accessing b5. So I play bishop c4 anyway, which I think is all book, because although the bishop seems to be looking down at some light squared pawns, um, it's still a good place for the bishop to be in the, in the Mora. Okay, so we have b5 now, this is not a problem, we just drop back to b3, right? Um, now he fianchettos the bishop on b7, I just castle, and we have queen to c7. Now, very often in the Mora, you'll notice that the, that the c file is completely open. There are no pawns of either color on the c file. So the general plan is to develop your queen very often to e2. You want, you want to find a square for this bishop, wherever it really belongs. And then you'll normally want to get one of your rooks to c1 with potential pressure against the queen, and normally your other rook to d1. Sometimes it goes to e1. Okay, so queen e2. Now he develops the queen's knight slightly in the way of the bishop, and here, I'm slightly slow because there's, there's a, a very, very typical idea that you have to know in the Mora, which is all to do with the sacrifice of this knight on this square. And actually the best move here is the immediate knight to d5. But I, um, I missed that. I played rook d1 first, which was an inaccuracy. Now we have h6, again, too slow, just too slow from black here. And now you can see the eval has gone to 1.2 in white's favor. And here I have a look, don't really think for long. 
2.2 seconds and I think it's time to go for it. And the, the point is why my queen is on e2 and black is not castled, right? And this is the price that black has paid for capturing the pawn and I guess doing all this development as well, having moved four pawns as well, right? So I have my queen on the e-file now and we have these two pawns in the way. Right, remember I said that this bishop, it looks uncomfortable for now, but now I play the move knight d5. So I'm attacking the queen. Um, and it's not that comfortable, right? Notice this, this knight's here as well. So here, black takes, and now it's nearly plus two. It is plus two for white because it's not a free knight. I capture uh, with a discovered check on the black king, and I'm attacking the knight, right? So in theory, the knight can just move back to e7, right? Which indeed is what is played, knight c to e7. But now look, my rook here on d1, right? What's the move? Very simply, pawn to d6, and this is just winning. This is winning now for white. I've got my, well, now I haven't got the piece back yet. Um, I've got the pawn back. He takes my knight here, and this is really a, a critical um, position, right? What do we mean by critical? Well, it's it's sharp. There are lots of things that could happen. I could take the knight, I could take the queen, I could take the bishop, right? Notice also that taking the bishop means that my queen is also attacking the rook on a8. And this is why you've got to love this opening. If you are you're cut from the same cloth as me, you're an open and attacking player. Um, this is this is the way to meet the Sicilian, in, in my view, at, at least at intermediate level. So, what we have to do now, and I do take 20 seconds now over my next move. This is a 10 minute rapid game. So I've got the option of taking the knight and then taking the bishop, but I will simply lose my queen and a rook, and that just doesn't add up. You know, even if I take the bishop and promote, king takes, and I'm just down in material, a lot of material. What if I take the queen? I take the queen, he takes my queen. What happens then? Right, I can promote, but again, that doesn't work. I could lose a rook as well. So the move that I play, which is the correct move, is actually queen takes f3. Interestingly, the engine's second line here is bishop takes f7 check. Because if king takes, then we take the bishop with check and a fork on the rook as well, also winning. The third best move is to take the bishop with the pawn. So that's not what I do. I take the bishop here thinking, look, it's a bishop. Yes, I'm a piece down for now, but I've still got this pin, right? The pawn is still protected by my rook and I'm hitting this as well. So I figure that on balance, that's got to be best and it, it, indeed it is. Queen here moves and now Again, I miss the uh, the killer blow. What is the killer blow? Well, well, it is queen takes f7 check, forcing the king to here, and then it's just uh, queen takes bishop, and that's actually mate because the pawn's guarding the escape square off the back rank. But I miss that. I take here. It's still still plus three for um, for white. He takes back with the bishop. And now I skewer the queen on the rook and uh, the game ends pretty quickly because we just take, right? And uh, and they resign here. But yeah, that's, you know, interesting here that I, I, I missed this particular idea as well. You know, noticing that the bishop's on f7, queen can go in. I should have been able to calculate that. But, ooh, that's a mora, boys and girls. That is absolutely textbook stuff. So let's quickly look at the game review. 80% accuracy for me. Nice to get a brilliant. So the brilliant is obviously throwing the light in there as an apparent sacrifice. 1700 for me, 1200 for my opponent and, and a poor opening actually at 1550 level for my opponent, although he's played a lot of natural moves. So there you go. My love affair with the Smith Mora continues. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. See you soon.